Okay, starting off turn number two with Arjun. And we've had a pretty rough go of things in turn number one. We got a Wraith right away. We got a Trap right away. So not so good. But the first thing we're going to do, and I probably would not have remembered to do this if I hadn't placed this card here. Use this at the beginning of your hero phase. You regain two hit points. So we're going to take that, flip over the card indicating that it's been used. And Arjun's going to go up to 9 hit points. Alright, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to have Arjun attack the Wraith with his Precise Strike. Because those Wraiths are terrible and we just need to get them gone. So that's what we're going to do. Standing right where he's at, he is adjacent to the monster, so he's just going to attack it with Precise Strike. He gets a plus 11 on that attack. The Wraith has a 15, so we just need to roll a 4 or better. And, of course, we got a 1. That's just the way my luck is in this game. But, luckily, if there's any luck to be had at all, we don't have to flip it over because we missed. Um, now, Arjun still can move. He has a movement speed of... 5. I'm just trying to think here. So we can't go through monsters. Now, I don't quite honestly know how these traps work. In terms of our ability to move over them or through them, I don't think I have to go around it because you place the trap on the tile just to indicate that it exists and so you remember that it's there. But I don't think, it, you know, it doesn't matter if you put it here or here or whatever. So the fact that I happen to put it here, I don't think it means that I would have to go around it. If I'm wrong on that, somebody correct me. So movement speed of five, we can go corner to corner. So we can go one and then corner to corner, two, three, four, five. We can do that. So that would be our movement. That means the Wraith would then attack Alyssa, which isn't necessarily what we want. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll stop here. Let's do that. So Arjun's going to use his movement to come over here. And that's going to be the end of his hero phase. So that means he didn't, he's not going to be able to explore, and so on and so on. But we have bigger things to worry about. So, no healing surge. We attacked and missed. We moved. No treasure, because we didn't kill anything. We're not exploring, so that means there's no new tile, which means there's no new monster being placed. But that does also mean that we have to take an encounter, because we did not explore. So, let's see what kind of encounter we get. And we got spider wave, spider webs attack the active hero. All right, so it's either going to going to immobilize us or slow us, depending if it hits. It's got a plus four on that attack, and eight plus four is twelve, so that's going to be a miss. And on a miss, we're going to get slowed down. So we'll take the spider webs and discard those. Grab a slowed marker for Arjun, so we remember till we have it. And let's update. So Arjun is now slowed. And that will expire when we get over here to this point. Put a little knot there. Alright, so the uh, Wraith and the dark, uh, dark Trap are still around. So, uh, and also we technically have started the Villain Phase, so we have to check for um, Cavan and... And technically, I guess I would have done that before I drew the encounter card, but I already knew that he was fine. He's on a tile with the hero, and there's no monster, so we're good. Okay, so that means the Wraith is going to activate, and if the Wraith is within a tile, and it is, it's going to move adjacent to the closest hero and attack with Life Draining Claws. So the closest hero in this case is going to be uh, Arjun, and... There's different ways to interpret the way to move. Uh, this this counts as adjacent, but the way I read the rules is that you move monsters bone pile to bone pile, always, and then if they're not adjacent at that point, then you move them so that they're adjacent, but you always go bone pile to bone pile. And the reason that that kind of sucks, well, the reason that definitely sucks, it'd be much nicer just to move the monster here, because then if we kill it, and it does its death shriek, it doesn't do any damage to us. But I think I think that's maybe why they wrote the rules the way they did. 
So you move bone pile to bone pile, and then if you need to adjust from there to make it adjacent, you make it adjacent. In this case, we don't need to adjust because he's adjacent to Alyssa. Now that's a strange way to read it because uh, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with life draining claws. I mean, very clearly Arjun is closer than Alyssa. So another thing I could do would be to move it here. But I think the key in this movement is that you have to go to the other tile. And if you don't go to the other tile, you're kind of cheating. Um, that's, that's how I read it. Um, and, and I think it's pretty clear that that's the right way to read it. So anyway, the Wraith attacks gets a plus six against Arjun. And that's eight plus six is 14, so that will miss. But it will do one damage anyway, because the Wraith does a damage on a miss. So that's going to take Arjun down to eight. And now the uh, Dark Trap technically does activate. Uh, but it's just not going to do anything because there aren't any heroes on the tile with the Dark Trap. Okay, moving on to uh, turn, uh, Alyssa's turn number two. So Alyssa can... Let's see here. You know, honestly, I don't think she can even get through over here. Because I, I don't think you can move on the stairs. Because technically the stairs are like, you know, three-dimensional. They're up here. So if she moves up the stairs and then down, I don't know if you can do that. Um, yeah, I don't know what the rule is on that. So, let's see, what can Alyssa do from where she's at? So, we can try to take out the Wraith. Uh, let's see here, place your hero on a tile. That's if we use a daily power, we don't really want to do that. Hmm. So, she can move through heroes, but... That's not going to help us, I don't think. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't know if you're, like, allowed to... I mean, they're heroes, so I would imagine they would be allowed to, like, walk up here and take a step to the side. I can't imagine, like, that there's any magical barrier that would prevent you from walking off a step. So, I don't know, but I'm going to say that's one square... Or, yeah, one square. Or rather, we'll just move her here. And I'm just not clear if you're allowed to do that. Because when you put your heroes on the on the starting tile, you're only allowed to place them on those blue areas. You're not allowed to place them on the steps themselves. So I don't know if we're allowed to stand on the stairs. But logically, it seems perfectly reasonable to me. So I'm going to go with that. Um, so we're going to need to attack with, uh, with, uh, hit and run, which is not the greatest in the world, because if we do kill the Wraith, we're all going to take one damage, but I, I really need to get rid of this Wraith. And of course we wasted another attack. That's a three, three plus six is nine and does not hit the Wraith and that counts as our attack. So we have just wasted another turn. So Alyssa... Nothing here. Moved. Attacked. No. And will not be exploring, so there's no new monster. There's uh, or no new tile, no new monster. So there will be an encounter. So technically, again, we... Okay, now this is interesting. So now we are at the beginning of the villain phase. There is a monster on the tile with Cabin, so... So I'm just trying to find... So at the start of any villain phase, if there is a monster on Cavan's tile, and there is, Cavan temporarily transforms into a vampire. Replace the Cavan token with the Strahd figurine. The young vampire activates immediately. All right, so we replace Cavan with the Strahd figurine. Let's so put that back over here. So now technically... Excuse me, now technically we have um, Cavan, or we'll just put YV for Young Vampire, and then we have the Ghoul. No, we killed the Ghoul, so we just have the Cobalt Skirmisher. But the Young Vampire gets to activate first, and here's what we say. 
So if the young vampire is adjacent to a hero, and it is, it attacks that hero with claws and fangs. So it's adjacent to Arjun, so we'll have it attack Arjun. It's adjacent to Arjun and Alyssa, but Arjun has a higher AC, so I'll take the, the strategic step there and say that he'll attack Arjun instead. Going to get a plus 8 on that attack, so let's have him attack with the plus 8. And of course we're rolling for monsters, so that's going to be a hit, because that's just how this game works. Or how my luck works, rather. So attacked Arjun for 2 damage, and then we'll read the rest of that here. So we go down to 6. And then it says, uh, do the young vampire regains a hit point, he hasn't taken any damage, so he's fine. And the young vampire moves one tile in the direction of its triangle, although he's already on the start tile, so the start tile has no triangles on it, so he doesn't move. Alright, so that was the young vampire's turn. So now the Cobalt Skirmisher will activate, and once again, it's just going to attack from right where it's at. Um, you know, using logic here. Arjun is kind of closer, but there's that corner in the way, so I would say logically he would attack Alyssa. Uh, so that's going to be a plus 9 on that attack against Alyssa. And 15, so of course that's going to hit. That's the way the dice roll. You roll for yourself, you roll low, you roll for the monsters, you roll high. So taking Alyssa down to 6. And that is the end of uh, her villain phase, so that's the end of turn number two. We are not looking good.